If you followed my little video on the four causes, formal cause, material cause, efficient cause, final cause, you can't help but come away with the idea that there Aristotle sees our world as one of order, stability, predictability, and rationality, and not a world of chaos and confusion. If you think a little more about the four causes, you should realize also that what Aristotle's getting at is not only what exists right now, but where it came from and what it could or will become in the future. Puppies become dogs and then dogs have puppies. Wash, rinse, repeat. Metaphysics is the science of being, yes, but also how things change, how they grow and develop, how they start and what they are then to become, something new. You can't really understand being without also understanding becoming. So first we need to introduce two new terms for what we already know from experience. First, there's actuality, or just act for short. Act is what, what things are right now according to the way the form the thing has shaped its matter. Second, there's potentiality, or potency for short. Potency is what a thing could possibly become if its matter were reshaped or changed or permitted to develop according to its form. Let's give an example. An everyday house cat. She was once herself a kitten, but now is fully actualized as a cat. Now she has a litter of kittens who are also potentially cats. If all goes well, the kittens will grow and develop and someday, someday achieve full cathood. But here's the thing. In order for us to be able to look at these kittens and understand what they are, we have to be able to understand what a full-fledged, fully actualized cat is. Act is prior to potency in the mind. Also, for the mother cat to produce a litter of kittens who have the potency to become full cats, she herself must possess that form of catness in actuality. She cannot give to her kittens what she herself does not have. The fancy Aristotle way of saying this is that the actuality of the efficient cause comes first. Act has to be prior to potency in real being. And the mother cat is more actualized as a cat than her kittens, who are only potential cats. But there's more to the story. One of these kittens became a cat and lived with his, with his owner as a pet named Orville. Sadly, Orville died an untimely death in a car accident. But his owner got over his sadness when he realized that Orville, who in actuality was only a dead cat, had the potential to become a flying drone helicopter, or a cat copter. No one had ever thought of making a cat copter before, but the cat copter form wasn't new. His owner could only understand Orville's cat copter potential because he had real knowledge both of cats and of helicopter drones. So even though cat copters did not yet exist, ACT was prior to potency here because the idea for the cat copter depended on actual cats and actual helicopter drones. But to become the efficient cause of his cat copter's vision, Orville's owner needed more than a vision of the cat copter form. He needed materials such as propellers, motors, remote controls, not to mention the stuffed body of his dead cat. My own cat Orville got killed by a car. Uh, I decided to turn it into a drone. As a tribute to his untimely death. I had no idea about uh, remote control helicopters or anything. So he consulted an aviation engineer with his idea. My initial thought was that's kind of crazy. Yes. The idea admittedly seems a little crazy, but, but they did it anyway. But my second thought was, let's do it. The maiden flight went off without a hitch, and the idea of the cat copter became 
in actuality. Now, we could say that Orville, after he died, really isn't Orville the cat anymore, but Orville's carcass. But Orville's carcass is still matter, and matter is by its nature receptive to different forms, which is to say it has a great deal of potency. We laugh at the cat copter example, or maybe we just find it disturbing. Orville's owner intended it as a work of art to help his beloved pet cat achieve a kind of immortality in a higher sort of existence. But the world is full of things that have been repurposed into other things, receiving different forms and becoming new actualities. A cheese grater made into a jewelry rack, an Adirondack chair made out of snow skis, old worn out boots used as a flower pot, computer as a mailbox. Matter is really very versatile, and with the right tools and know-how, it has the potency to become almost anything. In fact, Aristotle even thought that at the deepest level underlying all material things was something called primary matter. That is, matter without any form at all, but with the pure and unlimited potency to receive any form, and so to become anything. Prime matter, or stuff with pure potentiality that is nothing in actuality, is hard to envision. I think under normal circumstances, the best we can do is think of an amorphic blob of nothing. But to help you envision prime matter, we have a little treat for you. Our crack staff here at CDU have received a special dispensation from the Pope and our local bishop, for educational purposes only, to remove my human form entirely and, and temporarily reduce my human form to prime matter. Are we ready? Please, ladies and gentlemen, do not attempt this at home. Thank you.